Praise the Lord. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. We won't be before you very long. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper um, following the message. So I want to make sure that we give ample time and opportunity for us to share that time with Jesus. Um, we ask that you would uh, pardon us for the technical difficulties. The uh, video card on our main on our main computer went out, and so we had to um, patch in the laptop. And PowerPoint doesn't work very well with song service, and so please forgive us. Um, we hate we we'll have that all fixed this week. We have our um, computer guy coming in this week and I'm, I'm praying through the bill that's going to come after that because there's about four computers that he's going to have to work on but God is good because he continues to provide amen, amen somebody God amen. continues to provide and I'm amazed at how he does it and um it's no consequence that this message is centered around that, um, and certainly because of the um, technical difficulties, we won't have notes displayed for you, but I want to get it in your spirit in any, any way, and I believe that's going to happen. So if you are taking notes, I am caught between two titles for this one message and you can either call it the vision that creates provision or you can call it the power of forward the power of forward um, I think it's amazing how the Holy Spirit is thematic in direction he knows what we're in need of even before we ask and he begins to put certain things in place especially his word to continue to direct us forward into the plan that he has. If you, those of you who have been here consistently over these last six weeks or so, you would, and you took a look at the messages, you would notice that they seem to be all forward thinking or progressively moving us into one direction. And I don't believe that it's any mistake, consequence. It's not Mike Cole just trying to conjure up something. It's the, it's the word and the plan of God as he is moving his people forward. And there are times when I must be cognizant of the office that I stand in as I stand before the people. There are, there are five offices, five equipping gifts, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor. And there are times when there are apostolic messages that come forth, those that are pastoral, and just depending on the time and the situation. Um, I'm standing before you today as a prophet. I'm standing before you today prophetically declaring God's <coughs> word to you to, in order for you personally and us collectively to continue to move forward. Everybody say forward. forward. Come on, say it like you really mean it. Forward. Will you all stand to your feet just for a moment? As hard as you can, I want you to all go like this. Okay, come on. Come on. All right. You might have to shake it off a little bit. No. One more time. Do it one more time with sustaining power. Okay, sit down. I just want you to get it. I want you to get it in your spirit. Turn to Genesis 22 for a minute. I'll read from verse 10 through 17. Ooh, 
that's prophetic. Amen. Amen. Ah! Yeah. I got pastors for nuts. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a, I'm a crazy pastor moving forward. <laughs> Genesis 22, beginning at verse 10. Abraham stretched forth his hand, and he took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord came unto him out of heaven, and he said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, and seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham looked, went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord came unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing, hallelujah, that in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, oh, somebody's got to hear this today. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is, on, which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. Hallelujah. How many of you in here have dealt with crap? <laughs> Can I ask that one more time? Give me a real way off. How many of you in here have dealt with crap? <laughs> Woo, all right now. How many of you have dealt with crap even when you were doing your absolute best to do God's will? How many of you believe that God has a plan for your life anyway? <laughs> it doesn't matter what we find ourselves going through. But the cognitive reasoning has to be sustained in the truth that God has a plan for me. The context of what we want to share today is the power of forward. The power of forward. If we 
choose, hear this now, if we choose to walk by the power of God, we find ourselves doing some things that others might not understand. We find ourselves making some choices and some decisions that other people are not going to be able to grasp. But once God has told you, once he's spoken into your spirit, and once you get it down and you'll get it down, it's settled. Now, life happens. Things take place. We don't know for sure exactly where to go or what to do in the context of our current reality. But our current reality always has to face our current reality always must face, must come face to face with the power of forward. Doesn't matter what it looks like. What matters is my forward. It doesn't matter how things seem to be taking place. I'm not telling, I'm not talking about some rose-colored religion where you just where you just turn your eyes away. But what I'm talking about is being able to look death in the eye and say, in death, you have no power over me. Because I have the, the, the power of And my forward is, is contextualized in the forward of Jesus. Jesus knew his forward. And, be, and because of that, he won the victory over death, hell, and the grave. He didn't do that so we could just be nice, cutie, cutie Christians. He did it so that you could have the power of There has to be these places where now, and I, I, I'm understanding more and more why God has me on this theme. Because most of us go through hell and high water. Amen? And a lot of it, a lot of our hell or our high water, or our hell and our high water, is constituted in our own decision making. Yes. Come on. Come yeah. on. But it doesn't change his. Doesn't change it. It doesn't change his power to take us forward. It may delay some things. It may cause us to have to regroup. As we're looking at this particular passage, Abraham decided to believe God for his forward. Abraham decided that the word from God was better than the words of his experience. The word from God was better than the word from his wife. That's another sermon. The <laughs> word from God, oops, <laughs> no, that was slipped out. The word from God is better than his current reality. He was not, he didn't, he was not the father of many nations, but he believed in his father. He believed that God told him, had one son and a wannabe. He had a son that 
that he was basing his promise, God's promises on. One C. And then God said, I want you to give him to me. I want you to give your one promise to me. But here's the difference. Everybody, anybody, any one of us would say, sorry God, uh, no disrespect, but that ain't going to happen. But something happened in the depths of Abraham's soul to where he understood God's fall. He understood his forward so much that the one that God blessed him with, he was willing to sacrifice because God told him, I've got a forward for you. I've got a plan for you. I've got a direction for you. I know what I see concerning you. He said, I want to do it. All right. What? Come on, Isaac. Let's go up the mountain. What? Come on. What? Isaac said, where's, where's the ram for the offering? And what, did he, what, did, what was Abraham's response? God will provide. He was so focused. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm, you have to excuse me. I just, I just had... I just had a, a thought about the 20 years of ministry that I've been praying for and the things that haven't happened, but I believe that God told me. And regardless of what things are looking like, right, God told me, and I have to believe in his forward. Hallelujah. That's it. He said, God will provide. Come on up. I'm giving everything. I'm giving everything to God's fault. I'm giving everything to what God had promised me. I don't know what this thing is going to look like. All I know is that God put it in me to do it, and so I got to do it. Even when it looked at its works, Abraham decided that if God had promised it, he already saw what was going to happen. Understand this. The name of the mount was based on the name of, of God himself. Jehovah Jireh. And many say the Lord our provider. And that's right in some context. But you must understand that the only way that God provides is because God sees. Come on, come on. You see, there is no provision without a vision. There's no provision without a vision. God sees it. God sees it. And then he puts the things in place to make sure that there is provision for his vision. We look around and we're like, what is going on? God, where are you? I believe you told me this and I've been serving you and serving you and walking with you and praying for people. And seeing, seeing all these different things happen, where are you, God? Do you think, I mentioned, I made this statement to the intercessors this morning, do you think that it took, what, 450 years or so for, for God to deliver the children of Israel? Do you think he wanted them delivered the first year? He, he intended all along to deliver them. But there was a time to prepare and a time to provide. All I'm saying is, 
is that from day one, God saw. But now the process of provision. See, you understand, you must understand that, that Israel went in to Egypt as a family. But they came out as a great nation. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Israel went in as a family, but they came out a great nation. Millions of them. See, sometimes there are things that we're going through and that God just has us in this, pro in this process where it looks like all hell is breaking loose, looks like we're all wrapped up in bodies, looks like all this different stuff is going on, but all the while, He's got us in this incubator. He's got us in this place. He's got us in this plant where he's growing us and growing us and growing. What would happen if God poured out his provision before we were ready for it? Oh, come on, come on. What would happen if God, this caring, loving father, poured out all of his provision on us before we were ready for it? <coughs> We'd blow up. We mess up. Amen. You know, some, some of us in here have, uh, just, just for example, have gotten large sums of money and weren't ready for it. And then turn around and wonder why we were broke a few days later. Amen. But a loving father, a God like our God, says, I want them to be fully cooked. Because when it happens, when it happens, they'll rejoice forever and their seed and their seed seed and the generations to come. If I may, please forgive me. I guess in a lot of regards, this message is somewhat personally prophetic as well because now I'm seeing things in my personal life, in my personal life, that where I can say, I think I'm ready, God. And do you know what? Do you know why? Because there was, there was an altar built in my life. And on that altar, I was not willing to place everything on it. I wasn't willing to place everything on that altar. I needed to try to be Jesus for my family. Some of you might not understand what I'm saying. I wanted to handle things. I wanted to take things. I wanted to make sure that it was handled instead of operating by the promises of God for my I think I'm ready now. The power of forward is based on what God sees. I want you to miss that. The power of forward speaking into somebody's spirit right now. The power of forward is based on what God sees and not what you see. <coughs> Abraham decided to operate by God's vision. <laughs> Hear that? Abraham decided to operate by God's vision. His word declared it and it was so. And he began to do everything based on what God saw. If he sees it, he'll make a way for things to happen. Can I get an amen from anybody? Amen. If God sees it, come on, hear that, hear this young people. If God sees it, he's going to make a way for it to happen. In our Youth sometimes, we, we get a little impatient. And it, where us middle-aged people are concerned, we want to take things over 
anymore because we think, I ain't got much time left. And it just don't seem like God is in a hurry. So I'm going to, I'm going to circumvent God's plan and I'm going to do things my way. Praise the Lord. No. If God has a plan, if God has declared it, then God's going to make a way for it to happen. I'm just give God a little praise break right now. Just give, give, give him a hand of praise just for a second. <laughs> If he sees it and we walk in it, the power of forward will manifest. Come on. You hear that? If he sees it and then we walk in it, if he sees it, he makes sure we understand it. Things happen, stuff comes, all these things take place, we get discouraged, we get disheartened, and all this stuff, but it doesn't change our forward. Come on, somebody, it doesn't change our forward. If he sees it, and we walk in it, it's going to manifest. Hallelujah. It might not happen on your tomorrow. But it will happen on God's time. Can I get an amen from someplace? Amen. It, it's going to happen when God declares it's going to happen. Amen. In essence, in this passage, it looked like Abraham had the knife up, <coughs> had his son on the altar, and was ready to sacrifice him. And the scripture said that an angel came out of heaven. Boy, that's a long ride. That's a long ride. I wonder if Abraham was thinking as he was putting his son, said, I wonder if there's going to be an answer from him. Tying his son up. Pulling the knife out of his sheep. Real slow. <laughs> Get the knife in his hand. Raising up. See, this is how we are. This is how we are. In our, in our process of decision making, Gets it here. And somewhere down the Amtrak from heaven. <laughs> the angel shows up. And said, Abraham, hold up, wait a minute. We know. Can I, can I tell you? I'm not trying to change anything in the word. I'm, I'm fully aware of what scripture says. But was it so much heaven knowing as it was now Abraham knowing for sure that what God saw, he now sees. Because if you think about it, there was nothing else after that that changed or could change Abraham's direction. Amen. Hear that? Come on, somebody. Hear that? When we have come to the place to where we decided to walk with Jesus, and then different things have happened, and we stop, we won't go to that church anymore, we won't do this anymore, we, we, won't, we won't pray anymore, we won't read the scriptures anymore, we won't do all these things anymore, because it just seemed like God wasn't there when I wanted God to be there. Twenty-four years, 
I've been praying for certain things to happen in this ministry. Hey, I got the word, but this show is a long ride from heaven. But what difference does it make? It can't change my Going one direction. 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes again. What did he do here? He prepared us for the What did he do on the cross? He was preparing for our What did he do when he, when three days later he rose up out of that borrowed tomb? He was making provision for our Father. And when we do this, we're saying, Jesus, you saw my Father. I acknowledge you in the midst of my Father. As I take this bread and I drink this cup, I am proclaiming that I'm not going back, but I'm moving ahead. I receive this as your promise to my Lord. Open to the 
the destiny of the Lord Jesus. Find that, that prophetic vision. He already told you. He's already seen it. Now he's giving provision for you. Oh! 